Welcome back to the shop. I'm Jeff from Today's Craftsman. Uh, as you know or may know, we are a full service cabinet shop here at Green Street Joinery. And we wanted to give you a little look into something that we're building and tell you a little bit about it. So this is the base section of a 20 foot wall unit that we're building right now. Um, this will also get countertops. So tops on the cabinets as well as these benches. And then they get uh, open bookcases on top and we have bridge cabinets that are above these uh, benches. We have uh, windows above these benches, so uh, no cabinets on the wall here, but they will tie all the way across. This, I believe, is 20 feet, four inches, so pretty large, and it's going into a home in Montclair, New Jersey, and we're collaborating with uh, Sharon Sherman of Time and Place Design on this project. She brought us in as the cabinet makers, um, connected with her via Instagram years ago, and you know this is good advice to not like let old leads die because it took several years for us to finally collaborate and you know we're getting to do this this really cool job with her so um, i'll tell you a little bit about the materials and everything we have uh, pre-finished plywood cabinets so these are maple with uh, pre-finished uv two sides we have red oak face frames and we have red oak doors and these open cabinets on the top will be made out of uh, three quarter inch MDF core with a red oak veneer. And uh, we have that back here. We could show you some of that. And the countertops as well. So we'll build those up to inch and a half and we'll have uh, solid banding on the sides and we'll have uh, end panels here as well. So you won't see any of these, these exposed ends. So we built the cabinets and we built the face frames. We'll be building everything above uh, but we did buy these doors, so I'll show you these. This is a style that was picked by the client. They like this, this V-groove look. Um, so you have a, a chamfer basically on all the edges, and when the styles and rails meet, you get this V-groove. We also bought the drawer boxes. So these are 5 eighths inch solid birch drawers with uh, dovetail joinery. And we have half inch bottoms in these. You can hear, nice solid bottom. And something you might find interesting is we have access inside of these cabinets for uh, a toe kick heater. So these will have toe kick heaters beneath them and we create an access on the inside uh, so that, you know, if they ever have an issue with that toe kick heater, they'll be able to pull up this this panel and have full access to it. So a little bit of an alter alternative uh, construction here, no, no partition in the middle. Using those Celiche F70 slides, you can see how nice they run. They really are our favorite slides. Um, I have a couple doors hung here. The, uh, the drawer heads we like to install on site but we're using the Celiche 200 series hinges and those are a, a tool free hinge. So you can see no, no exposed screws. This is a, actually a, a hinged latch and the dowels have a wedge. So it's, it's just sort of wedged in there. They work really nicely. This is our stack of material for countertops and open bookcases. So this is three quarter inch uh, MDF with a red oak face. This is actually the back side. And this is our good side. And we also have the, um, the material for the backs of those open cabinets is here. And we're using plywood in that situation because we're gonna be um, affixing those to the wall. And I really don't wanna screw through MDF to attach something to the wall. It just, um, it's not as strong as plywood. So we're using plywood for that application. And the countertop, so what we'll do is we'll cut um, the top piece of our countertops and then we'll put what's called build up on the bottom so we'll just use probably four or six inch strips to build it up to an inch and a half and then we'll run it through the Sahisa uh, compact PCS edge bander we have inch and five eighths by one millimeter solid red oak edge banding so it's a really fast and easy way to make um, countertops and it's cost effective because it's not solid wood and you know, you're not worrying about applying like a three quarter inch piece of solid wood and then seeing that big seam on the top. So it's a really nice way to do it. Um, and the one millimeter will accept a nice round over. So um, sort of the best of both worlds.
What are you finishing the cabinet with? So these are getting stained with uh, General Finishes Enduro Spray No Wipe Stain, which is a new product. Uh, they're doing formulations actually at General Finishes, so it's not like widely available yet. I believe it's coming out this quarter. Um, it's a, a color called Burnt Umber, and then it'll be top coated with the Pro Series Clear Polyurethane. Here's a sample of what the finish should look like. So this is the chip that we're matching. Um, so these are both water-based finishes, the, the spray no wipe stain, it's essentially a dye, and then the water-based polyurethane top coat. Um, and we'll get some footage of that when we start finishing these cabinets because it's gonna be a lot of finishing. So John was asking me about these cabinets over here, you know, saying, oh, what, what project is this? And these cabinets might look vaguely familiar uh, that's because they're these cabinets, except I built them wrong, uh, you know, in, in my um, just crazy schedule. I went to make my cut lists for these cabinets and I'm pulling dimensions off of Fusion 360 and this height dimension that I pulled was actually incorrect. Um, there's a couple different values that it gives you when you're pulling a dimension and I grabbed the wrong one. So these are, I think, 20 and a quarter high sorry, 21 and a quarter high, and they were supposed to be 24 and a half high. Um, so I have, I have three, the, the benches luckily were fine. I have three cabinets that are the wrong size that um, I think Keith might take, our buddy Keith, so we'll see. As you can see, our doors are hung on this cabinet here, but we have a couple more to hang on this cabinet. So we could take you over to the hinge boring machine, which you may have seen before, and show you how we bore for these hinges and how easily they go in with no screws. We're here at the hinge boring machine. This is a uh, Omal insert C, and this is set up uh, specifically for ceviche hinges, although it does work with uh, many of the other European hinges. And I have it all set up to to actually bore these doors. We did a whole video on this, and if you'd like to watch that, we'll leave a link down in the description. Um, I'm using just uh, measurements and this laser for this uh, instance, because I'm only boring, uh, what is it, six doors. So you can set up these stops, um, but I'm just using a mark. I know that I'm two and nine sixteenths from the bottom and 18 and 15, 18 and 15 sixteenths from the bottom. Um, and you want to keep consistent, always pulling from one side of the door. So we can turn on our clamping and bore for our hinge. And same thing for the second. So for these hinges, we have a standard 35 millimeter hole and two, I think they're eight, yeah, eight millimeter holes. And what happens is we have our hinge here. Again, this is the 200 series from Ceviche. This is for thick door. Uh, these are three quarters, so um, don't necessarily need a thick door hinge, but you can see the soft close pistons in there. Those are actually filled with uh, fluid and you, I don't know if you could see that but that's what actuates the soft close so they're super smooth but what happens is when we place this into the into the board holes and we close this door you can see how these spread out and they have this barb here and these little ribs so they really grab into these eight millimeter holes so I'll pop one in for you. The first uh, installation could be, you need to be a little forceful and sometimes you need a mallet because uh, your, okay, I didn't eat breakfast. So let me grab a mallet. <laughs> so the first time you're, you're driving that, that barb into the wood. So I might need to tap it in with a mallet. So they go in nice and easy like that. And then when we need to take these out for finishing, you could just use a flathead screwdriver. There's a little uh, 
a little indentation to grab into and you just pop the door open and the hinge comes right out. So makes finishing easy. You could take the doors on and off. You could take the hinges off for shipment if you want. Um, just a lot easier than screws and even the dowel, the dowel type hinges. You can see a second time it's easier. The dowel type hinges, uh, when you pull those off, you still have those plastic dowels in the holes and you need to you know, be wary of those when you're finishing. So these are very nice. So to hang the door, it's as easy as just uh, snapping them into these base plates. So snap them in and there you have it. It needs some adjustment obviously because we're on um, unlevel ground. But that was just a quick look at this job. And if you want to see more, stay tuned because I think we're going to do uh, maybe a couple other videos on it on the channel and follow Green Street Joinery on Instagram to see some uh, stories and photos as to what's going on. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below and we'll see you next week.